Creation by Erica Smith. Night. Garrett sits at a table, reading the last pages of a legal pad that is filled with writing. Beside him on the table sits a box filled with similar legal pads. There's a sideboard or some manner of cabinet on one side of the room. Garrett has a small notebook beside him, which is open, with a pen resting on it. He jots down a quick note. We hear Kelvin's voice from off stage. He's reading it now. You'll get your turn, don't worry. Mom says hi. Hi, Mom. Did you hear that? She says you should call her and to say hi to Cassandra and that she likes me best. Mom, not Cassandra. Hi, Mom. Did you hear? Oh, cool. Okay, I'll call again soon. Bye, Mom. I love you too. Do you want half a sandwich? Sure, thanks. Uh, I'm on the last page, by the way. Garrett finishes the last page. He stares at the legal pad for a moment then places it carefully into the box. I'm finished. Before you come out of the kitchen, I need you to promise me that you're wearing pants. I am wearing pants. Do you promise? Because last time you promised, it turned out to be a lie. I'm wearing pants. I trust you. Calvin enters. He's carrying a plate with a sandwich on it. So, what do you think? Sit down. Calvin sits. Garrett holds out his hands. Calvin takes them hesitantly. Weird. Before I start, I have something to tell you. Dude, can it wait? I was talking to Cassandra before I came here, and... She agrees. It's time to tell you. Oh, if Cassandra wants me to know, it has to be more important than my thing. Kelvin. Oh, I've been waiting in the kitchen literally all day. It is really boring in there. Whatever it is, can you tell me later? Or do I really have to be holding your hands for this? It's important. Fine. Okay, here we go. You're adopted. Jesus Christ. Well, no, I misspoke. I'm adopted. You are the worst person in the world. You and Cassandra deserve each other. <laughs> Garrett stands as Calvin takes an angry bite of sandwich and therefore does not notice the peculiar expression that crosses Calvin's face. Okay, okay, in all seriousness, I... I love it! You do. It's... <laughs> Wow, it's amazing what I just read. This is, oh gosh, like, I know sci-fi isn't usually your thing. Well, this sci-fi definitely is. It's so good. Oh, wow. You've really got a great character in Empress Crimson O. Zahara ruling over all of Earth. Sorry, Tara. And it's soaring and epic and... uh. It's a lot! I have outlines for the next seven in the series. Do you want to... Seven? Yeah, at least. It's got some real oof, this story. Some real uh, firepower. Yeah, yeah, so that's the good news. The bad news is that everything I just said was a lie. What? Don't get dramatic. Don't get... You were lying to me? I was. To what possible purpose? Why would you... Why would you do any of that? The lie was to spare myself the difficulty of having to tell my brother that he's bad at his chosen art form. The truth was to spare myself the impossibility of having to read seven more of these things. I'm bad at my chosen art form. That's your... What do you mean? I don't know where to start, honestly start with the truth? Jesus Christ, I've been writing Gone with the Stars for six and a half years now. Never mind. I do know where to start. It's Gone with the Wind in Space. Yes. I'm going to say that one more time. It's Gone with the Wind in 
space. It's an homage. Even the title is. Okay, okay, let me. Garrett sits and absently takes a bite of sandwich. He immediately spits it onto the floor. <coughs> what did I just put in my mouth? I was distracted. Uh, oh God, it's still there. Oh. I'm just grabbing the mustard. Ugh. I'll be tasting a lot for days. Oh. It's pastrami and peanut butter. I'm surprised it's not melting the floor. Yeah, it's probably not going to catch on, but come on, can you at least clean it up? Yeah. Garrett cleans up the mouthful of sandwich. So you hate it. I didn't say hate. Yeah, but that's what you were thinking. I hate this. I hate this. I really hate this, and I hate Kelvin, and I hate everything about his great big stupid dumb hate bastard. On the plus side, Mom likes you best. Of course she does. You're a dick. Kelvin, I've been reading for 12 hours, so forgive me if I'm not at my most diplomatic. I'm tired. I'm confused, and my eyes hurt from trying to puzzle out a more or less plagiarized fourth-rate space opera from your chicken-ass handwriting. No, no. <sighs> it's chicken scratch. No, what I'm saying is that your handwriting looks like a chicken stuck a pencil halfway up its ass and then wrote an entire novel with the pencil that was stuck up its own ass. So you hate me, my book, my sandwich, and my handwriting. Anything else? Do you hate uh, my house, uh, my doormat, my hand towels? I don't hate you or your book. Just said. I don't hate it. It's objectively not good. It's objectively a first draft. First is a strong word. Say one nice thing about it. Just one. Okay. He starts flipping through his notes and keeps flipping. Wow. Really? Ha <laughs> ha I found one. It is 100% less racist than its progenitor. Ooh, someone got a word of the day calendar for Christmas. It was from dad. Lay it out for me. What? Lay it out for me. Tell me everything that's wrong with it. Everything? Kelvin, I've only got another 50 or 60 years to live. Oh yeah, what a surprise. My brother, the pedantic asshole, is going to stand here being a pedantic asshole instead of actually saying anything constructive. He's going to congratulate himself on the snarky log flumes that slew us down out of his mouth, one after the other, heedless of the bacteria-laden water that's splashing up in his wake, and only caring that each log shoots out at exactly the same time to inflict a careful, perfect wound. So we've met? Hear it! That was an intensely labored metaphor. Oh yeah, because your chicken simile was the apogee of sophisticated oratory. He always gets us the same presence. Look, if the 12 hours you spent reading, I spent with my heart in my throat, hoping like hell that you'd like it, you know, at all, so, this is a little bit of a letdown for me, if I'm honest, and I am. So if you want to help, help. But if you just want to score points off me, pick literally any other time. I'm not trying to score points off you. Really? No, wait, I've got this one. If I were trying to score points off you, I'd have called it Battlestar Craptastica. <laughs> sure, okay, you didn't say that. These are your actual words. It's objectively not good. My brother is bad at his chosen art form. Fourth-rate space opera. Oh, and my favorite, forgive me if, I, if I'm not at my most diplomatic. You have insulted me in every possible way while not saying anything even remotely helpful, so no. I will not forgive you. Get out. Now. Kelvin. Kelvin, I'm, I'm sorry. If you to me, I will throw something heavy at you. 
Look, I'm not... Things have been... I really am sorry. Kelvin snatches the box of legal pads off the table and hurls it at Garrett. Garrett dodges it and stares at Kelvin uneasily. Kelvin turns his back on Garrett and pulls out a bottle of liquor, of liquor out of the cabinet and fills a glass. He drains it, then refills it. You're right. I went too far. You mind? No. Garrett goes to the cabinet and pours himself a glass. He takes a slug, holds it in his mouth for a second, then lets it fall back into the glass. Ew. Why are you suddenly incapable of keeping food in your mouth? That is disgusting! I know. That's why I kept it. You can go now. Calvin picks up Garrett's notebook. These are your notes? About the book? Yes. Calvin drops the notebook on the ground. Garrett picks it up. You want to hear them? Nope. They're pretty insightful. I bet. Mom really does like you best. I know. And Cassandra, she wants to bury the hatchet. She talks to me about you all the time. She's always asking about you. What are your notes? You want to hear them? Sure. Okay, uh, let's... Calvin abruptly goes into the next room and comes out with an empty legal pack and and a pen. He sets them on the table. He looks at Garrett then goes into the same room and comes out carrying three more empty legal pads. Go ahead. Sure that's going to be enough? Sorry, am I being too dramatic for you? Garrett opens the notebook, flips through a few pages of notes. So let's start with the Empress's robot butler. Red. His name is Red. I know, I'm... He looks at his notebook. He closes it then picks the box of legal pads off the floor and starts going through them, arranging them, looking for the first one. What are you doing? I'm just... Hang on, I'm trying to find it. Here. He finds the legal pad he's looking for and looks at the first page for a long time. You know, uh, I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna read it again. What? Yeah, I don't think I gave it a fair chance before it, you know, me and sci-fi. It's been kind of a weird, so maybe I wasn't in the best headspace to read it. What happened? Nothing. That something was weird. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, yeah, so I'll, I'll read it again. I'll be more open-minded. I was probably wrong about... What's going on? I said a lot of mean shit back there. He did. And I, I want to try to... And when has that ever mattered to you? Okay, look. I was shitty before. I admit that, but don't fucking exaggerate. If I'm so terrible to you all the time, then maybe don't ask me to be the first one to give an opinion on... Your novel, which is not only in a genre I know nothing about, is not only an homage to a deeply problematic book, but written in longhand? You could go to any other person on the planet, like mom or dad or maybe, I don't know, an editor? But you came to me. Yes, I was shitty. You won't let me apologize, so... I'm trying to make up for it another way. You said I was bad at my art form, Garrett. I... I did. You're not. You've always been... A pedantic asshole. Yes, there's no need for a question mark at the end of that sentence, by the way. What I was gonna say is that... You've always been my first audience. All those stories I told you when we were kids. I was four years old. I lived in a really scary house with some really scary people. And I told stories in my head so I could pretend I was somewhere else. And then I was somewhere else and it was too loud and too crowded and no one paid attention to me. So I muttered stories to myself so I could pretend someone was talking to me. 
And then I was in a bright, happy place with two people who talked to me. And I told them stories, and they told me one about a little boy who was a lot like me, who was lonely and scared somewhere. And did I want to meet him? And then there was a silent, scrawny kid sharing my room who was just my age and was even more terrified than I was at being somewhere new. So I told him stories so he'd feel better, and he listened to them until he fell asleep at night. When he started talking, he asked for them. He used to like them. He used to like me. Yeah, it's gone with the wind in space. It doesn't mean it's not personal. Personal doesn't mean good. Yeah, you've got a meaningful story that I... I didn't... I didn't recognize it, but I should have. As a novel, it needs a truckload of work, but it's a masterclass at disguising... Six and a half years is a weirdly specific amount of time. I didn't clock it when you said it before, but... You dated the first page. I know this date. I was a scrawny, silent, terrified kid. And one day, in a brand new house, another kid said he was my brand new brother. And did I want to hear a brand new story? It was a gift. I'd never gotten a gift before, and six and a half years ago, that gift almost killed himself. Now who's being dramatic? What? I almost died. Yes, I, I didn't almost kill myself. You had alcohol poisoning! Not on purpose. If I'd been trying to leave Las Vegas, I wouldn't have had the presence of mind to call 911 like I apparently did. I just had too much to drink, and the next thing you know, bad smelling booze coma. Just! Yeah, it happens. That's why I drink this stuff. So nasty, I don't want to overdo it. Though after the third or fourth, you don't notice it so much. I can't believe you're joking about this! Hey, it was my near-death experience if anyone gets to joke about it. You didn't call 911! Yeah, I did. I must have, or... You didn't call 911! You called me! And you told me a story. And when I got here, you weren't breathing. Do you understand? You weren't breathing. You're lucky your door was unlocked. The only thing I know less about than CPR is breaking in a ring. You just... You weren't breathing. You weren't breathing. What's the story about? Garrett's phone rings. He looks at it, then at Kelvin. It's like, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Hey. Uh, fine, yeah, sorry, I lost track of time. We're catching up. I, I haven't a, I haven't gotten there yet. Y yeah, I might. Cool. N nah, it might be a while. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, what kind of sandwich? Oh my god, you're the best. Thank you. Hey, speaking of sandwiches, no, uh, I'll save that story for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Good night. Love you. Thanks. What were you going to tell me earlier? Nothing. Try again. 
and don't answer my question in the exact style of a bad sitcom? Nothing. Okay, then. You can wait till tomorrow. But I'm ready now, see. Look, I changed my mind. I will get there eventually, but we were kind of talking about something. Calvin pulls out his phone, dials a number. Hey, Cassandra, you aren't in bed yet, right? What the hell, Calvin? Come on. Good. Yeah, that was a weird question. Um, hey, what was Garrett supposed to tell me today? <laughs> no, I asked him and he sitcomed me. Seriously annoying. Thank you. Stop it. Hang up. Yeah, he's totally chickening out. <laughs> sure. She says, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> His face is amazing right now. Um, so what was it? You are. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. Oh my God, Uncle Kelvin is going to spoil this kid to death. Not death, uh, death's off the table. A lot, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil them a lot. Not just a writer, a really good writer. Ask your partner, he'll tell you. He'll be lying, but he'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, I think we should. Um, Garrett mentioned it, and if you think it can happen, I, th I think we can make it happen. Can we talk soon, just you and me? I think we need to clear the air. I like it. Good night. So, congratulations. Try again, but this time don't say it as though I told you that I got a job at a Confederate flag factory. I am happy. I am experiencing joy. Dude, I don't even know if you're happy about it. I am. Now that I know that? Congratulations! Why didn't you tell me? I tried, but you were really impatient about getting to your thing. That's what you were here to do! And you said that mine couldn't possibly be more important. Well, I'm really happy for you and Cassandra. That's really great. I kind of thought you'd be more excited about this. Is that right? Yeah, I'm having a kid. Cassandra's having a kid. You, presumably, will be present. Why wouldn't I be? Putting aside the irony of that particular question. What do you mean? Oh, I, I see it now. Continue. Let me break it down for you. I spent six and a half years creating a thing and 12 hours waiting for a reaction to the thing from the only critic whose reaction I care about, only to have it completely dismissed from the conversation after three minutes of insults. And then I found out that none of that matters because you did sex one time. So that means that not only do I have to accept what will almost certainly be an insincere apology from a woman who said a lot of terrible things about me and choke down my visceral discomfort with her for the rest of my life, which would be bad enough, but it also means that from this moment on, I am less vital to the earth than you which in this case has nothing to do with talent or perseverance and everything to do with the biology and timing. Margaret Mitchell got hit by a car and died when she was 48 years old. She published one of the most beloved novels of all time and didn't have children. Which of those do you think is the more important thing about her? I'm sorry. I'll be happy for you tomorrow. Right now I'm still absorbing this. 
You're not going to yell at me? I mean, I kind of deserve it. I needed you to be excited about this. I really needed you to counteract my stark craving terror with some honest to goodness jumping up and down so that I'd know everything was going to be okay. I needed you to do it, okay? <laughs> I haven't even told mom and dad yet. Oh, 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 no, 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 fuck, 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 fuck. Uh. I, I did this wrong. I did this so wrong. Sure. You can fix your thing. Your book. You can fix what's wrong with it. You can make it better. But if I fuck up my kid. Who says you're going to fuck up? Oh, I am going to fuck up. No. No, no. You're, you're going to do great. You literally have no evidence that that's true. Come on, you're terrific with kids. Other people's kids! Kids I can give back! Kids who aren't depending on me to turn them into a person! And if I fuck up this kid, I might... I mean... It might not be possible to fix them. You. You can edit. And re-edit and micro-edit and then send it out into the world and then... It's out there, and it's done. I will never be done. What if they turn out bad? What if they kill someone? Was that the very first thought you had, or...? What if my kid comes to me when they're three years old and proudly presents me with a peanut butter and pastrani sandwich that they made all by themselves, and I spit it out on the floor? What if they ask me to read their story for their third grade English class and I tell them that it's bad and that they're bad at what they want to do and I'm going to be so bad, Kelvin. I'm going to be so bad. Okay? Breathe. I need to do this again. Do what again? Garrett grabs his notebook and throws it away. He turns frantically to Kelvin. Hey, Kelvin, good to see you. Guess what? Maybe you should sit down. Really gonna need you to yes and me here, okay? Hey, Kelvin, good to see you. Guess what? What? Cassandra's pregnant! Oh my god! <laughs> you know, right? That's awesome! Way to do sex! Please, stop putting it that way. I'm so happy for you. You're gonna be a great dad. Thanks. Tell me everything, except the sex part. I will, I, I promise, but first, uh, can you read your book? Yeah, are you sure? It's pretty long. I want to read it before anyone else does. I wrote it longhand. I've seen worse. You don't usually like sci-fi. I'll start. They hug, it's nice. I'm really surprised you passed up the opportunity to call me Margaret Bitchell. It was this close. They break the hug. Garrett picks up the box. This is it, I take it. That's the first half. Kidding, kidding. Enjoy. I'll bring it back in a day or two. Yes, no rush. I know. Give Cassandra a hug for me? I will. He waves and exits. Calvin stands still for a while. He goes to the trash can and lifts Garrett's notebook out of it, stares at it, and starts to read it. He sits down at a table and calmly takes a bite of sandwich as he reads. 